You big dummy. That's right, big dummy back with some more amp tests. Today, make sure you stick around to the very end if you want to see what happened. Today, we're going to look at two mono versions of Minimax amplifiers from Down for Sound, the MM1000 and the MM1500 KFD. No, that's not KFC, it's KFD. Let's take a look here. We get an owner's manual with the MM1000. Talks about the amp, tells you what to do, tells you what not to do. We also get a couple of Allen's keys. Yes, he is still giving us his keys, amazingly enough. And we get a remote base cable. Looks like a networking cable for those of you who know computers from the early 2000s. And of course, we get the Down for Sound base remote with Power Protect clip, temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit. Tells you everything except what's for dinner. Also has a connection on the back here for the base cable which it wouldn't work very well without a base cable connection. This is a plastic base knob, but we don't care about that anymore because you guys complain that I say metal is better, whatever. Plastic or metal, whatever you want, you got it. This one's plastic though. On the bottom, there's also a screw so you can change your voltage to match your system. Here's the amp, getting a little behind. And yeah, this is in a blue finish. Now these do come in six different colors. I just chose the blue for this one because I kind of like the blue, but uh, take your pick here. One of six colors. Here on one side, you'll see we have inputs and outputs for RCAs. These are Tiffany style. We also have a gain control from 6 volts down to 0.2 volts. Also low pass filter 250 hertz down to 35 hertz. Subsonic filter 10 hertz up to 50 hertz. And the remote connection there for the bass knob. We also have power, protect, and clip indicators there on the amplifier. On the opposite side, we have connections for the power as well as for the speakers. First up here on the left, you'll see four gauge for ground and 12 volt and about 12 gauge there for the remote. These are kind of angled. The screw goes in angle, but the wire goes in straight. So that's fine. The speaker outputs though are kind of small. I was able to fit 12 gauge wire in there, but it's very tight. I wish they were a little bit bigger. We will talk about that later. Of course, this has the acrylic bottom on. It does have a fan as well. We'll get to the insides later in the video. Let's move on to the MM1500 KFD. This one I chose the purple color. This one is also available in six different colors. So if purple is not your color, you can choose one of the other ones. Here we can see the amp looks very similar to the 1000, but there are some differences. As you can see here on one end, the inputs are via a plug. We'll show that here in a minute. Gain control six volts to 0.2. These RCA pigtails are the same ones that the four channel used I showed before. That has two of them. Now, the reason they did this is obviously for fitment reasons. It had to, couldn't fit the full size RCA jack. So some of you aren't gonna like this, but it is what it is. We also have high pass filter, low pass filter with times 10 settings as well. And it can be band passed in addition. So lots of different features there. And also the remote connection on the end for the base knob. On the opposite side, ground and 12 volt are again our four gauge. The remote accepts around 12 gauge wire. In the middle, we have the power protecting clip LEDs. Also, we have dual speaker outputs. This is a mono block amp, so it just gives you two outputs in case you wanna hook up multiple speakers, but it is a mono signal and your choice to use it in full range or in low pass. Here, as far as the dimensions go, 2.2 inches for the height, 4.9 inches for the width, and the 1500 is 9.5 inches long, the 1000 is 8.3 inches long. The MM1000 is rated 550 watts at 4 ohms, 850 at 2 ohms, or 1000 at 1 ohm. The 1500 is rated 500 at 4 ohms, 1000 at 2 ohms, or 1500 at 1 ohm. Of course, you know we're going to verify those claims here using our SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno. If you haven't seen these tests before on the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, you'll see the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the clamp indicator so that we can calculate the approximate efficiency of each amplifier. This here's my favorite part. In this video, we'll be testing both amps. First up, we'll test the MM1000, good old blue. Four ohms, it's rated 550 watts at 14.4. Let's try the certified test first using the 40 hertz tone. And yes, 655 at 14.36. So easily meets and exceeds the rated power. Let's try it uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, 40 hertz. Signal, 660 watts, 14.32. Next up, we'll reset the dyno here for the dynamic track. We'll switch the head unit to play the dynamic pulse tone into the amp. And there you can see, 640 watts at 14.48. 
Now, what about the efficiency we measured? We pulled 47 amps of current. We measured 96% efficient at four ohms. Very good. Now let's try two ohms. It's rated 850 watts at 14.4. What can we get? Here we go. Certified test first. Can we get the 850? Yes, 945 at 14.37. Nice. Reset the dyno here to uncertified to the clipping mode. Is it possible? Can we bust 1,000 at two ohms? Yeah. Yes, we can. 1,004, 14.26. What about dynamically? Can we bust that 1,000? Oh, yes. There you go. Busting 1,100. Our voltage is a little strong there, but 11.36 at 14.61. Let's check that efficiency, though. It has dropped some 77% at 2 ohms. Now, let's set the amp dyno for the 1 ohm test. This is where this little... Mighty Might Amplifier 8.5 inches long is rated 1,000 watts. Let's try it certified first, a 1% distortion. There you go, 1,145 watts of 14.11 meets and again exceeds the rated power by a little over 10%. Next up, uncertified up to clipping. And there you go, <laughs> 1322 at 13.87. So nice power output here. Dynamically, what do we get? Oh, look at this. We're touching close to 2,000. 1872, nope, 1877 at 14.47. But there is some bad news. Check out the efficiency, 58% at one ohm, which is a little disappointing, but overall the amplifier performed extremely well, met and exceeded all of its ratings. And uh, yeah, very good performer here. No complaints at all for the MM1000. Next up, let's move on to old purple, the MM1500 KFD. Let's try it first at four ohms. Interestingly enough, this one's rated 500 watts, which is actually less than the 1000 watt amp. Let's see what we get here. Certified test where you are using the 40 hertz tone and very close to the MM1000. We get 668 at 14.31. Uncertified up to the clipping point. Again, 40 hertz tone. Let's see what we get. And 692 at 14.24. Reset the track once again for the dynamic pulse track at 40 hertz. Right around 700 watts, a little bit over. 727 at 14.47. What about that efficiency here for the 1500 watt? 83%, so it's not quite as good at four ohms as the MM1000. Let's try two ohms. It's rated 1,000 watts at 14.4. Certified test first, 40 hertz track. Here we go. Yep, we get it. About 10% over. 1,092, 14.28. What about to the clipping point? Can we bust 1,100, 1,200, get a little more? I think we got over 1,200 with the other amp. 1,138, 14.2. So actually the MM1000 was more powerful at two ohms. This is very interesting. Dynamically though, we're busting over 1300 watts here. 1318, 14.63. Now let's check that efficiency out. 76.5%, so very close to the two ohm run also with the MM1000. Not terrible, but not great. One ohm was rated 1500 watts. Let's see what we get here. Certified test first. 40 hertz track, no, not quite there. 14.24 at 14.38, so not quite the 1500 watts. We'll talk about why that is here shortly. Uncertified to clipping, oh yeah, 15.78, so we definitely get it to clipping at 40 hertz. What about dynamically? Can we bust 2000? Oh yeah, <laughs> 2200. Even more, 2228. Yo, this thing's got some power there for dynamics. As far as efficiency, they 58%. Once again, a one ohm, not very good. Pretty much the same as the MM1000 for efficiency. Here, all the other tests are eight ohms on here as well. The thing to note, at one ohm, this amp was run and tested at one kilohertz. So it does over 1500 watts at one kilohertz. So they cheated us a little bit. I'm still questioning why do you use this thing full range? It's a monoblock mini amp. You're going to use it for subs. 
Anyway, I digress. Let's power up this MM1000 and try it on some speakers. Here we have the 1000 Mini Max hooked up. Let's try it on a sub. Let's change gears to the 1500 watt amp. We're going to try it first full range, then we'll try it with the subwoofer later in the same demos. So get ready. Here it goes. Let's see how it flows with a little ice flow. Let's try another one. This one's Coast. Let's try the purple 1500 on some subs. All right, next up, we'll check out the internals here of both amps. Also check the thermals of the 1000. It did not get extremely hot. Neither did the 1500, which is hard to believe with that low efficiency, but I pushed them really hard and they didn't get very hot. So it is what it is. Let's take off the bottom plexi panel. Some people say, why you take those off? Because you can see through them. Well, it's hard to get video because of the reflection. So I have to take out the screws so we can take a closer look. Let's look at the 1000 watt model first. Here's the slow pan with the camera so you can see all the goodies inside. You'll see the watts up here on the circuit board. They have sayings on all their amps. You see the 3300 microfarad, 35 volt for the power supply section, 80 volt, 2200 microfarad there for the outputs. For the purple amp, you'll see we got a little bit larger transformer, all gas, no brakes. Also, we have the same 2200 microfarad, 35 volt, filtering there for the power supply side but we have larger 100 volt 3300 microfarad caps these are 105 degrees celsius and again a fly over here you can see the stickers on top of the caps <laughs> to me just doesn't look so good but anyway i understand why they do it now let's talk about the pros and cons things i like things could be better at least things to be aware of first up the mm1000 has a small footprint rated power plus has a remote base connection six color choices it does have RCA ins and outs, and it stayed cool again during the test after the subwoofer test after the dyno ran cool. The MM1500 is full range capable, and it has high pass, low pass, and band pass crossovers. Things to consider on the 1000, the speaker outputs are small. That's for both amps. A tiny 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Efficiency at one ohm is not so good. Also for the 1500, the pigtails, people aren't going to like that. Why is it full range? I don't know. The remote only works for low pass. Also rated at one kilohertz. So if it didn't make rated at 40 hertz, it's because it's rated at one kilohertz. There you have my test of the Minimax Monos, the MM1000 and the MM1500 KFD. If you need full range for a mini amp, maybe look at the 1500, but I would say go with the MM1000 in most cases. Powers the subwoofer, great. Very small, compact. Thank you guys always for watching. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here.
All right. We have popped the fuse. So yes, it was the fuse that actually feeds from the power supply and we blew it. Oh well, there you have it. You big dumb.